for centuries. Our kind has stayed hidden on Earth. But darkness has found us again. What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how I got my Tahoe to look like this. So if you wanna go ahead and check that out, make sure you stay tuned and let's get to it. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and debashed all the body on the Tahoe right here. I also did go ahead and remove the running boards right here. So as you can see, it looks a little bit higher and also the roof rack. So I went ahead and deleted all that right there to make it look smoother. It's got the SS bumper, the bottom lip. I did go ahead and add and color match it. So it makes it look way different. So I think it gives it a better look. And you know, it's a little bit different right there, but I'll be showing you guys how I did all this right here. And then also this grill right here is an Amazon grill. And I did go ahead and color match it to the color of the truck. When I purchased it, it was all gloss black. So I went ahead and color matched it and you know, did new headlights and all that stuff. But I'll be showing you guys how I did all this right here. And also all the items that I used, I'll be listing them down below in the description if you guys want to check them out. And if you guys remember, you know, the top was all stock and everything. You know, had all the moldings, the running boards and all that. And it made it look a little bit, you know, like older and stuff. But now that I did all this, I believe, you know, it looks a little bit more updated and, you know, a little bit different right there. All right, so to start off first, I like to warm these up with a heat gun. So as you can see, I have my heat gun right here. And, you know, I'll just warm it all up right here. So once this is warm right here, what I like to do is, you know, put a microfiber towel in the middle and then pry it a little bit with this plastic pry tool. Once this area lifts up a little bit, then I can go ahead and just, you know, start pulling it all off right there. But like I said, first I'll go ahead and heat it up. That way it'll warm up the adhesive and it makes it a little bit easier. So here I went ahead and put in the microfiber towel and I've got my pry tool right here so I can just, you know, try not to scratch the paint right there. But you can just see, it just kind of lifts it up right there. And it's already a little bit loose there. So it's easier with two hands, but you know, you can do it one hand too. So there you can see it's already coming off. And you can just yank it off. All right, so there it is right there. And if, and if you care about your moldings right here, then I wouldn't pull it like that. But you know, I don't really care about these, so I'm gonna throw them away. And that's what it looks like right there. So now you can see, you know, some of the tape actually came off, but this is just dirt on the top right here. So overall, it's not too bad. And this one right here looks pretty good. Doesn't have no dents. It has like a little, well, it looks like maybe dirty right here or some paint, but I'll have to clean it up right there. So I'll go ahead and do that to all of them. So I'm gonna do that the same way here on the Tahoe sign and then on that molding right there. And then once all that is done, then I'll just be left over with this. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do the wheel right there, but I'll just try to remove as much as I can by hand. That way, you know, it's easier because, you know, some of them are actually like kind of loose and the ones that are more stubborn, you know, that's the ones you want to do with the eraser tool right there. I'll just wipe this down real quick with some water, you know, that way I can get some of the dirt out the way. And that way I'll try to get most of this off without doing it with the eraser wheel, you know, because that way, you know, makes it easier and faster. So you can see some of them will actually come off with the heat gun, but the ones that are gonna be more stubborn, that's the ones that I wanna use that eraser tool on. Most of it is actually coming off with the heat gun on this side right here. But sometimes they won't all come off. So, you know, I'm gonna just keep going at it and see, you know, how much I can get. If I can get most of it, then that'll be pretty good, but the ones that are more tougher, you know, I know the wheel will help out on those more. So I'm just warming all this area up and you gotta, you know, you wanna move it around cause you don't wanna overheat the panel too much. So let's see if this piece will come all off. If you're doing it with two hands, it is a little bit better or easier, but you know, I guess it just depends on how old the adhesive is in your truck, but this one's not too bad overall. But you can see like sometimes it starts breaking up in small pieces. And if you heat it up pretty good, you know, it should come off in big pieces. So that heat gun does help out a lot. And I pretty much got all of it. And it actually came out pretty clean. So, you know, they don't always come off like this. But that does help out right there. It does help out, you know, to kind of clean it up with the rag. And, you know, like warm it up. But overall, it's pretty good. And I'll still have to, you know, spray it over with some goo off or goo gone to remove some of the residue. 
but overall looks pretty good and that one looks a little bit different so hopefully that one will be easy as well and then this one right here looks like it might need the wheel but i'm gonna start i'm gonna try to warm this one up as well and you know hopefully i don't have to use the eraser too much but if yours are real bad you know they might you know not come off as quick so here on the passenger side i already went ahead and you know removed the molding so i just pulled them off and now you can see the residue of the tape right here you know sometimes whenever you remove these you know there's different things under here like dents or you know different things that you might not be able to see because people like to cover them up with these moldings well, would you look at that yeah there's a few more blemishes on the car, the car oh my gosh just car, look at the it the car is not perfect just look at it <laughs> just you know, look like at it right here you know there's like a small thing right here and i think there's like a couple down here but they're not too visible and you know later on they can be fixed so I'm going to just start taking them off with the wheel right here. So I'm just letting the friction, you know, do all the work right here. Pretty much just came all off right there and it looks good overall so not too bad let me know what you guys think on this right here but i think this saves you a lot of time right there you know especially if it's all stubborn and stuff like real old tape that doesn't want to come off this works real good right here and here's just a little close-up at how it looks so you can just kind of see that there's a little bit of residue but that's you know this can be taken off with that goo off or that goo gone stuff so that's what i'll spray on to remove this bottom yeah. ones so i'll just spray this area and then, you know, I'll remove some of the pieces that are still stuck on here. Because, you know, some of these are real small. And this is just a plastic razor blade that's in the kit right there. So it actually helps out pretty good. All right, so here's the parts I just got back. And they're already painted, as you can see. And I don't think they're, like, exactly the same tone. But it's pretty close since, you know, I did get them painted separate off the truck. And, you know, they didn't get blended. But overall, they look pretty good. And, you know, I'm happy with them right now. So, you know, these are the side piece on the grill right here. And then this one as well. And the SS bumper right here looks pretty good. It still does have some holes right here. I guess he didn't, you know, fill these up, but I might just leave these on, you know. I don't think it's a big deal, or maybe I'll just make them bigger or put the plate. I'm not sure, but for right now, I don't want to put the plate, but, you know, that's what it's looking like. And the grill right here, it looks pretty nice, but you guys let me know what you think down below in the comments. So I just got to go ahead and put it on and see what it looks like. And it also did used to have some lights right here. They were like orange, but I took them off, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put them on or I might just leave them blank for now. But I'm going to figure this one out later. So I'll just worry about those lights later on. And that's pretty much it right there on the parts. And on the Denali parts right here, I just went ahead and, you know, cleaned it up and put in some new double-sided tape. So they've got new tape. So this is the driver's side right here. And I already put on the passenger side right there. These are pretty simple to put on them right here. So you can see that it just has like four little spots. So two here and then there's two on the bottom right here. So I use the smaller clips like this, so they're kind of thin at the bottom. But it's just four clips, so two right here and then two on the side. And the trucks already come with those holes right there, so even if it's not a Denali, you know, it'll still fit on there. And back here, you can see that the factory holes are right here for the moldings on the Denali. So you don't have to do nothing extra to put them on, you know, just get the clips right there. And then the double-sided tape goes right here. And then on the bottom, there's also the two holes right here. Right here on the bottom, you'll see one hole. And then the other one right there. So there's nothing special that you got to do. You know, they just go on right there. So there it is. As you can see, it's real easy to put these moldings on. And those factory holes are, you know, easy to line them up. So it's not too bad. And, you know, it's just double-sided tape right there. Let me know what you guys think on this. But I think it looks pretty good. So here's the passenger side right here. And you can see if I already, you know, removed the Tahoe emblems and then the door moldings right here. And it does have like a little bit of dings right here. Why don't you yeah, just look out. at it? Yeah, it's sad. It's the only mark. I, I mean, just car. look at it. Yeah. I mean, just get a look at that. A cop did that. A cop. So you can kind of see it right there. And then I think on that side a little bit more. But overall, I mean, it's not too bad. And later on, you know, it can be fixed. All right, guys. So I'm going to just go ahead and remove the roof rack as well right now. And as you can see, I already removed this cover. And there's like two screws right here. So one here, and then there's another one there. And these are just gonna be T25 screws. And it's a total of like five screws on each side. So it's like three over there and then two hidden under this back cap right there. And later, most likely I'll probably remove this moldings right here as well. And then, you know, use the eraser tool or whatever just to get the adhesive off because these are pretty tough right here. 
So I'm gonna just go ahead and start off taking these. They're pretty simple. So these are just T25s and there's like five on this side and then five on that side right there. So now with the roof rack off, I'll just clean up all this area. And then also later on, I'm gonna be removing these moldings right here so they can give it a smoother look. And it should look way better. And I might remove this later on as well. I don't really like this third brake light here, but you know, for now, I think I'm gonna just leave it. And that's what it looks like so far. So it's not that bad. I'm just gonna get the newer bolts so that they look better than this because these are sticking out a little bit. I'll just be looking out for some of those. And if I don't like it, you know, I might just put on my Escalade roof rack, but I think I'm gonna just leave it off for now. All right, guys, so I'm about to start putting the SS bumper cover on the Tahoe. And also I did go ahead and purchase some headlights right here. So they're nothing special, you know, it's just clear. And I'm gonna be putting these on as well so they can make it look a little bit better. And I also have the clear lights right here. And I'll also have these on the description if you guys wanted to check them out. But they're just gonna be all clear right there. And then later on, I can change them up. And for these right now, I'm gonna just be using the bulbs that I have, the Auxito bulbs, and then my regular halogen high beam because I haven't changed it. And these right here, I'm gonna use the same. So all the stock bulbs for now, and next time I'll change them out to LED and stuff like that. So here's a last look at the Tahoe before I start changing it up. And I think it looks good, but this should hopefully make it look a little bit better. And all I'm gonna do is, you know, put the cover on top of this and keep the factory bumper and also this top pad. So essentially what I'll be doing is just putting the SS bumper cover on top of this right here. And I'll just be removing this bottom valence right here. And also the fog light, cause it's already pretty old and it won't be needed with the SS bumper cover. And this valence just uses clips down here. So I'll just be removing them all around. And then, you know, I could just slide it on top of this and it should be good to go right there. And other than that, if this gets in the way, then I might just remove this upper pad, but I think it should be fine. Cause I've seen a lot of people, you know, put them on top of this, but I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. guys so what i had to do first was remove my fog lights and they just had you know two 10 millimeters on top right here so i removed the clip and everything right there because you know i won't be using these anymore and then there's like 12 clips on it and the first part to come off was like this part right here because you know there's another plastic behind it but it was pretty much 12 of those right there and then i did use my small ratchet to get those from the top because those were getting on the way of you know removing these so this is pretty much what she's looking like right now and I'm just pulling on it. They, they're kind of hard right here. So like right here, you can kind of see like that second part of the clip is still there. And then these right here already went ahead and removed. So I just got to continue doing the rest and should be good to go. All right, so I got it off right there. So I won't be using this anymore. And then right here, it was actually 13. So it was 13 of these right there. All right guys, so this is what it looks like right here with the SS bumper and the factory grill. You know, when I see a car like this, first thing I do is I say, would you look at this? So I think it looks pretty good, but I'm still going to change out the grill right now. And I'll keep this grill for later on, you know, if I want to color match it or something like that. Because, you know, it's still the factory grill. So I like the way it looks right there. And so right now I'm just going to remove it. You know, it's easy to take these off. You just got to, you know, pull them off from right here. And then it's got like four little Phillips screws right here that you can see. It's like a plastic clip. So there's four clips on the sides. So two here and then two on this side. And then this right here comes off with some clips right here. I already removed them, but, you know, you can see the 10 millimeter bolt right there. And then, you know, it all just comes out real easy on these trucks. They're pretty simple. And to hold this bumper on, I did have to put a tapping screw right here. And I am going to add some more down in this area. But I'll probably, you know, move the tires right now so they can give me some clearance. And then I can put some more tapping screws. I'll probably put, I think I want to put like two more right here. Because this one right here is only grabbing onto the plastic. So this is what it looks like without the grill on. You notice on the Tahoe right here, it doesn't have the transmission cooler like my Yukon had. So maybe later on, you know, I'll add one right here and right now it's just empty. But pretty much what I'm gonna do right now is just clean it up and see if I can kind of like spray it because it kind of looks like, you know, pretty old right here, like rusted. Yeah, but I ain't perfect. Don't tell nobody, but I think my rust is starting to show through. So what I'll do is probably clean the condenser and then all this area. And then after that, I'll probably paint it so it can look a little bit better because right now it's looking kind of old and stuff. So that's pretty much what it looks like right now. So what I like to do is just get some condenser coil like cleaner here, like for the house. And then, you know, put it in a bottle with some water and then pretty much just spray the coils up there. But this is just the one that I'm using right here. I'm pretty sure you can use other brands, but so this is just the brand that I have. But, you know, there's other brands and as long as it cleans the coils, it should be good to go right there. But it even tells you right here, you know, it's condenser coil cleaner and, you know, just different brands. 
and then just like a plastic bottle and I'm gonna put some water on it and just spray it. And then once after that, I'll go ahead and rinse it. So there it is. You can kind of tell it's, it's still clear, but it has a little bit of like foam and stuff in there. So I'm just gonna spray it all around and it should like clean it up more than what it is now. Cause right now, you know, it's got a lot of dirt and I'm pretty sure they never cleaned it before. So it's good to do this right here. That way, you know, maybe the AC works better or something. So there you can see wherever I sprayed it, it starts foaming out where it cleans it. So I'm gonna just do this on the whole radiator. And actually the AC is not even working right now. So this could also be part of it, you know, cause the condenser is dirty. So I'm gonna just go ahead and, you know, take care of that right now and make it look better once it's all like dried up and everything. It just starts foaming out. So it'll do that all around and should be good after that. So there it is. As you can see, it's already foaming all up pretty good. And you know, it should be pretty clean after this. And I just put this cover right here, you know, cause I just painted the bumper. So I don't want it to get, you know, accidentally messed up, but it should be fine. But you know, I just want to be careful. So I went ahead and put this on right there and I'm gonna just let it foam up a little bit more. And then I'll go ahead and rinse it off with the hose and let it dry. So I'll just quickly rinse it off right here. I think it looks a little bit better already. Yeah, almost there, twin. Couple more tweaks. But I still want to dry it up and paint it up, especially this part, because it looks all rusty. But I'm pretty sure this is already getting a lot of the dirt in there or whatever so this is what it looks like right here now that it's all dried up it looks all faded and stuff so what i want to do is i'm gonna spray it and also i'm gonna spray this area here because it's all rusted and i'm gonna use some rust reformer right here so something like this so it'll go on top of the rust and then after that i'll do the flat black so once that's done it should look a little bit better because the grill's gonna have a bigger opening and you know should make it look better all right, so here's the coat with the rust reformer. It already looks better to me, so let me know what you guys think, but I'm still gonna paint a little bit over here with the flat black, you know, just to make it a little bit more even. But overall, it looks better now. So whenever I put that grill, you know, I don't have to be seeing all that rust right there. So later on, if it's damaged or something, like I can just change it out. But for now, I'll just have it black like this. And there it is, guys. So it's not perfect, but I think it looks way better than, you know, what it was. But you guys let me know what you think down below. I'll just go ahead and let it dry and I'll install my new grill. And after that, I'll change out the headlights. So these are all very simple to do anyway. So it's not that bad right there. But that's what it looks like so far. And I'm kind of thinking I need to add something on the bottom right here. Because this bumper is not as low as the Denali bumper. And it does look nice, but I do want it a little bit lower. So I might add a little bit something on there. So I'm trying to mount the grill right here. And as you can see on this grill, the mounting points are different than the factory one. So... They're just like little studs right here and you have to put these metal clips that come on it. So, so these were the factory ones here and then you could twist them with like a Phillips head and it's got a plastic in the back. And so this is the piece right here. So I had to just like remove all these. It was four of them. And I'm gonna try to put on these clips, but you know, if they don't grab, I might do some screws or something. Cause you know, sometimes the aftermarket ones don't grab as good, but I'm gonna see how they go on right now and figure out how to mount it. And then after that, I am gonna have to screw on the side pieces because they get screwed on from right here. I had them off because I took them to get painted all separate so that, you know, it would look better, but it does get screwed on right here. It just uses like four screws around this area and then on the other side too. And I also did put on back the little ember reflectors right here with the LEDs. So I think it looks a little bit better with them on. Later on, I might change them, but for now I'm gonna leave them amber. And I actually do like the amber color, but I might change them later on. For now it's good. And you know, I just have the connectors there. So on these ember lights, I'll probably hook them up to my DRLs and see how they look. And if not, you know, I might change them to parking lights at the end or I'm not sure yet, but they're just having the connectors right here. And you know, just to make it a little bit different, I had to add a little bit more LEDs in the back. So you can see right there, I added some strips on the bottom. And then I also have, you know, a strip down here. So I might hook these up later on to like a headlight wire or a parking light wire and see how it looks. So it'll just be lighting up white for now. And what I did, you know, was just run them and then I have the wiring right here. So later on I can tap into it, but that's what it looks like for now. And you guys let me know what you think on this grill. I think it looks pretty good here on the bench, but you know, hopefully it should look better on the truck. So let me go ahead and start putting this on right there. So before I put the cover on, this is what it looks like right here. So as you know, it's a Amazon grill and you know, it's not original. So what I did was went ahead and put on some bolts right here, some eight millimeter, you know, self-tapping screws. And you can see it goes all the way through the plastic. 
and I just didn't put the factory clip that came with this grill. Only on the bottom, I left the two clips. And so on the top, I just added this eight millimeter here. And the top right here, I left the stock 10 millimeter and then another eight right here. And that's what it looks like from the back right there. And then all my wiring, you know, I just went ahead and zip tied right here with the factory hood hinge. And that way they're not hanging around. And while I have this open, I also did go ahead and mount my siren for my alarm. So later on, I'll be hooking it up and I'm gonna just put it right here. And I'll probably be hooking up the horn and some other stuff. So this is just gonna be one of them right there. And you know, overall it looks pretty clean right there. So there on the bottom, you can still see the clip and then you can see my LEDs right here. So I got my strip going down on that side and then on this side again. So there it is guys, that's the grill on right there. Let me know what you guys think. I think it looks pretty good. It's just missing the hood now, but pretty much all I had to do was put on the bolts right here. So here you can see a better look at the bolts. So I added an eight millimeter there. And then here's the other one again. So, and the factory cover just goes back on like normal. It actually fits pretty good, so I like it. I think it makes it look more modern. And then on the side for the bumper, on the SS bumper, I did have to put the tapping screws here. So this tapping screw right here is actually going through the metal bumper. And this top one is just going on top of the upper pad. So it's on the plastic. I'm not sure if you can kind of see it right here. So you can kind of see still that's the factory upper pad. And you know, I actually used it to tap in this tapping screw to it. So it's pretty sturdy with these two screws. And this is actually the main one that's holding it. And you know, it feels pretty good. So it's pretty solid. So I'm gonna just leave it alone how it is. And on the other side, it looks the same way. I added the two tapping screws. And I do want to put a lip right here because the running boards are actually like lower than the front bumper. So I still have my old lip from my Yukon and I'm going to put it on. I used to have it color matched and I had took it off because it was too low. But on this one, I think it should be fine because it's not the Denali bumper. And on those side steps, I'm going to probably end up taking them off. So that way it'll look a little bit better and, you know, give me a better look up here with a bigger lip. But that's what it looks like so far and let me know what you think like i said i think it looks pretty good it makes it look a little bit newer so i have the lip right here also and this was just a factory lip i just had it color matched and you know i had it stored because the yukon was pretty low and it was like already scraping it up but most likely i'm gonna have to be cutting this area to cut these pieces this is what i'm gonna be using right here i'm not sure if you guys ever use one of these but they're actually pretty good at cutting like pieces like this or other pieces so it just like vibrates and stuff so i ended up cutting all of the pieces right here. So even the small lip that I had here, I cut it because whenever you put it on, it actually doesn't let it like bend to make it look good. So I just went ahead and took that off completely. So what I ended up just leaving was this middle piece right here. So all this in the middle. So that way the lip goes all the way to the back because there's like some little blocks that, you know, it makes it stop around this area. So now it fits pretty good and you can see them right here. So those still have the stoppers right there, which is fine on the middle. So let me try it out for you guys real quick and you'll see right now it makes a big difference. So check that out right there. So it's not bolted on, but it's just hanging on there. And as you can see, you know, it makes a big difference on the bumper, it makes it look way better. So let me know what you think on this. I think it makes it look nicer. And you know, I just gotta do the tapping screws. Now looking at it like this, you know, I don't miss my Denali bumper that much. So overall, I think it looks good. And I will go ahead and put on those tapping screws. So what I ended up using to put the lip on is some clamps like this so you know it could stay in place and then I also did put some self tapping screws and these are just like three and a quarter so almost an inch you can probably use an inch but this is what I had so I just put a whole bunch of those and now the lip is on and it's like secure so let me go under here and I'll show you right now where I got all the tapping screws so I just have a whole bunch of tapping screws all around and I try to spread them much as much as I could we can kind of see them all the way over there so it came out pretty good and it's, you know, it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't move at all. So I'm happy with that. And I'll go ahead and lower it. And honestly, like I was not expecting the lip to do a big change, but you know, it actually changed the whole look of it. Even with the SS bumper and the painted grill, that lip just made it, you know, complete right there. So I think it came out good, but you guys let me know what you think down below. And down here in the corners, it's a little bit shorter. So there you can see it's not completely all the way to the end but it doesn't look bad at all because it's kind of like tucked under there and the same on the driver's side over here so they're just tucked like a little bit and you know overall looks pretty good so now i just want to go ahead and remove those side steps because they don't really go right there and i actually want to drop the truck but you know that's another time right there and overall she's looking way different now so what i'll do right now is maybe take these off 
And also, I'm gonna have to go to Home Depot and get me some screws to change these out because some of these are sticking up on the top. So, so the top bolts right here, some of them are sticking out because they're factory. And some of them, like, let's say this one's not going all the way down. And here again, you can see one of them is poking out. Like, some of them are just not going all the way down. So, I'm gonna just go get me some stainless steel bolts. So, I went ahead and purchased some shorter bolts to replace these factory ones because, you know, these are not going all the way in. And it's just a little bit smaller, so not by that much. And on the top side, they have a Phillips head on them. So, that's what I'll be using right there. And this is the size right here. So it's an M6 and then it's by 25 millimeter right there. So I just went ahead and purchased all 10. That way, you know, I can keep them all the same. And these are stainless, you know, that way they're not gonna rust out or anything like that. So there you can see, I went ahead and put on the screws right now. And you know, they're just on there. And I didn't take these off right now. Next time I'll take them off, but you know, it's gonna be the same as the body with the, you know, eraser tool or, you know, maybe the heat gun will be good enough right there. But I'll just do those next time because, you know, they're a little bit tricky since they're up higher and the truck is, you know, not sitting low right now but it's looking a little bit better as far as like, you know, more smooth and all that, which I like. And the brake light, I'll just leave here for now, but later on, I do want to take it off because it's kind of small and I don't like these too much, but you know, that's fine now. All right, so I'm just removing the running boards right here and it's going to have six of these brackets and you don't really have to take them all off. I just went ahead and, you know, completely took these off. And so the screws that are on here are a T40 screw. So this goes over the top right here, a T40. And they'll be in like different offset locations. So this one was here and then this one was on the top side. And then on the bottom, it'll have 10 millimeters. So a 10 here and then also a 10 millimeter here. And these top ones are 10 millimeters with a nut on the bottom. So if you notice right here, I have the bolt and then a nut. So it's like you have to take off the bottom piece as well. So, you know, two 10 millimeters right here holding it. And to take off the running board, like I said, you don't have to take the whole bracket off, but pretty much you have to take these T40s off. So unscrew this. And then this top 10 millimeter, this one can stay and it'll hold on to the actual running board. But if you just want to, you know, take it off first, I mean, you can, but to actually remove the running boards, it's going to be the tens right here with the bottom 10 millimeter and then the T40 up here. So on all six, and then that should make it come off. And all I was using, you know, it's like a small ratchet with some 10 millimeter and then, you know, a drill. These actually help out as well. I'm not sure if you guys like using these, but you know, these are pretty good right here. And then, you know, so these are just some of the ones that'll work right there, but you know, you can do it manual tools or power tools. Either way will work as long as you have some deep socket tins and then some of the smaller tins as well. Cause some of these areas are real tight. And I'll also link these down below in the description if you want to check them out. But this one right here is very cool. Cause this one you can do a lot of things with cause it's so small. And also you can do like the T40, you know, which I used right here. So this one actually helped out a lot with this T40 cause there's not a lot of space in there. So it actually worked out real good and there you know i was able to get in here because there's it's real tight once you get up in there and right here i can carry the tin as well so you know this works out pretty good and it's small that's the good thing about it and then you know you can move it from here to tighten or untighten so here you can see i had removed one of the tins from here but this one like i said you don't have to take this one off this one will just stay attached to the running board so this one can actually stay you don't really have to take this one but the bottom one right here you do so there you can see there's a 10 millimeter nut in the bottom, right up under it. And there on the top, you can see the head of the 10 millimeter. And on the wall, I already removed that T40, but you can see where it screws straight up in there. And that's the same on all of these. And towards the driver's side, the only one that's gonna be different is this one right here, which is a 13 millimeter. And this one is grabbing onto the fender, that's why. So right on the fender in this area, and then you'll see that the spot's right here and I already took it off, so that was just a 13. So it's 113 here and then one on the passenger side as well. And all the rest of them are the T40s and the 10 millimeters. All right guys, so here's the view without the running board. So it looks way higher, but you know, later on I do want to drop it and I'll show you on the passenger side, it still has it on. So you can kind of tell it looks, you know, more dropped. The front looks better. And so this is on the passenger side. It looks okay with the running board, but I do prefer it without it. So I'm just gonna take it off as well. And even though without the running board, you know, it looks higher, you know, later I do wanna drop it. So it's cool with me and I'm gonna just take that off as well. But you guys let me know what you think. If you like this view better with the running board right now or without it on this side. Or what do you think about this right here? So I actually prefer this view better cause you know, it looks more smoother and cleaner. All right, so I got the passenger side down right here. And so they're just an L bracket. And you know, these are the ones that right here that you don't have to remove on the side. 
but you do want to remove this 10 millimeter and then the t40 up here so they're going to be on the wall one two three four five six so all six brackets are going to be the same you know with the t40s on top and then the 10 millimeters right here and they're very close to the wall so that's why you know a small ratchet or a wrench will fit in here better than you know something too big but that's how they look like right there And right in the front right here is where the 13 millimeter bolt goes so that one just goes up and actually removing it with the brackets just like this is a little bit easier than removing the brackets individually because whenever you know the bolts all come off the running board doesn't fall just down and you know you can just push it down whenever you're ready but whenever you actually remove these like i did on the driver's side like the running board just falls down because there's nothing else you know holding it in place but these brackets actually kind of keep it in place with the little you know pressure on there also guys earlier i had installed the headlights already I'm not sure if i had put it on there but yeah these are pretty much the new parking lights and the headlights that i had previously you know installed from earlier and all i have right now inside are the regular halogen bulbs for my parking turn signals and so i just have the halogen bulbs on this side for my markers and turn signals and then for the drls i had some purple leds that i had laying around so i went ahead and put them on right there and later on i'll be changing them out to like something else maybe like switchbacks or some type of led style right there but these are good for now on my headlights up here i also have the auxedo bulb still and then for my high beams i have the regular halogens so these i'll change later on as well and you know i don't really use them since these are so bright and i'm not really worried about these right now and i also did opt it to go for something like this because you know a lot of people have the c lights right now so you know mine are just gonna be a little bit different and you know i don't really mind but i think they look pretty good and these parking lights do have the orange side marker because it was kind of hard finding the ones that are all clear but i know they're out there but i mean i wasn't really too worried about it and i think they look okay because i'm actually thinking about doing a custom wiring right here and i actually do like the amber color so i'm not really worried about the amber reflector i mean i think it looks okay and it gives it a little bit of color and also on the grill you know these are amber over here so that's fine and i think it's not that bad right there but the way that i hooked up my grill leds since remember i did put on some leds right here I went ahead and hooked them up to the parking lights so right over here the wiring is going through the grill right here and it's hooked up to the side marker right here on the parking light so whenever my parking lights are on and this bulb turns on it turns on the grill lights and there's no relays or anything like that it's just straight up wire and you can kind of see back here so the wire is just right here i ran this black and white wire and i tapped them directly as you can see right there the plug let me see if i can zoom in real quick so there you can see is the side marker right here and they're just tapped in there so positive and negative and the leds you know they don't require that much power so i just went ahead and did that and it's not like permanent but that's why i left it like that and i didn't cover it all the way or anything like that because you know i don't really mind i'm gonna be changing it up later so i'll just be having the grill light up white for now and whenever i want to upgrade you know i'll just go into the connections and do that right there so it won't be bad at all and my grill lights right here these amber leds are also hooked up to the drl so it's straight up wire as well you know they have their plug and play connectors up here but the wiring is you know attached directly to the factory wiring on the drl so no relays or anything like that either because these don't pull a lot of current so those will be fine as well because they don't pull a lot of current and as you can tell i mean they're way smaller than my strips are you know all the way from here to here and i have like double strips so that's not going to be an issue either and you know whenever these come on then those three will also come on and even at night whenever the white grill is on it actually illuminates these which is not that bad at all either and you know i don't really mind for having them at night but they actually look pretty good right there and i'll go ahead and show you right now how to test out the drls with the fuse box even if the truck is off so you know you can see all the color right now how it looks so to test them out real quick i can take off my drl relay and then just jump a wire between 87 and 30. So whatever is on 30, which is positive, is gonna jump over to 87, like if the relay was on. And what I have here is just a wire, you know. So a little bit of copper sticking out. And you can kind of see the relay is right here. So it's already loose, cause you know, I was messing with it. But this is 87 right here. And then on the top right corner is 30. So if I just stick them in like this. So one on 87 and one on 30. So there you can see the jumper wire from corner to corner. And then like I said, it's right here, 87 and then 30 on the right corner. And now the lights should be on. So that's pretty much my DRLs right now. The three amber ones on top, and then those are supposed to be purple. I don't know if they look pink or something, but 
you know that's supposed to be purple and i'm gonna change them out later but for now it's whatever you know it actually had no halogen bulbs in there so i just put that in for now but you guys let me know what you think so far and i'm about to pull it out right now to see what it looks like on the street and stuff So there she is guys so you guys let me know what you think right here but i think she's looking like my favorite color naked because she's looking real smooth right here with the peter metallic and you know no moldings or anything like that so it makes it look way different and you know i like it so you guys let me know what you guys think down there down below in the comments and you know it makes it look pretty good even though it's simple and you know that peter metallic i just like because you know whenever it's dirty or anything like that it's just pretty much about the same so now she really needs like a drop or something because, you know, she's sitting kind of high, even though it's not that bad. But, you know, I do want to drop her later on. And now, you know, from back here, it's pretty good, except for the taillights I want to change out because I got the Escalade bumper, those Denali rear moldings, the Escalade vent caps are good. You know, overall, it's pretty good there. And then here, you know, I already took this off on the running boards. The roof rack is gone. And I can still put the Escalade roof rack as well because, you know, I have that. And of course, you know, I'm gonna have to put my hood back or, you know, try to get something good right there. But for now, it's good like this. And you guys let me know what else do you think I should add here? And, you know, I think that bumper looks way better with the lip now because, you know, it looks a little bit bigger. It reminds me a little bit of the Denali bumper, but, you know, different. So that's actually good because, you know, it's not a Denali or nothing like that. And I'm pretty sure the Tahoe is screaming for a drop because I think it'll look even meaner if it's lower to the ground, you know, because it'll close up all those fender gaps and make it look way different and this truck right here has a long way to go so don't forget to hit that like button down below subscribe comment and all that good stuff so i'll see you guys in the next one and we're gone